Our today's topic is collapsible soils. In this topic, we will see its introduction, what are the characteristics, what are the testing methods, and what are the treatment methods. In geotechnical engineering one, so also in geology, we have learned how the soil is formed. So basically, there are two processes responsible for the formation of soil. One is mechanical disintegration of rocks and second is chemical disintegration of rocks. The soil which is formed due to mechanical disintegration of rocks show same characteristics as that of the parent rock. As far as chemical disintegration is concerned, the characteristics shown by the soil are different from its parent rock. Now, there are two types of soils uh, which are problematic. One is expansive soil and second is collapsible soil, out of which today we are discussing collapsible soil. What is collapsible soil? It is a clay silt that undergoes a radical rearrangement of particles when comes in contact with water. Now, when water is added to a soil, there is rearrangement, repacking of soil grains because of which there would be reduction in the volume. That reduction in the volume is responsible for the collapse of soil. Hence, it is called as collapsible soil. As you can see in the diagram, there are big particles which are shown as soil grains and there are small particles, plate-like particles which are shown in between these big particles. Basically, these small particles, they are forming a bond between these big soil grains. So, when water enter, enters into this void, there would be breakage of this bond and these bigger particles will come nearer to each other and there would be reduction in the volume. This way, with the addition of water, this reduction in the volume takes place. Similar situation is observed when that soil is subjected to additional loads. So, two situations responsible for the collapse of soil are weighting and additional load value or magnitude. Now, this soil is when dry, it can withstand greater pressure with little settlement. But when it comes in contact with water, there would be large settlement and collapse of the soil. Because of this collapse, there would be settlement and this settlement may cause damage to various civil engineering structures in contact like pipeline, pumping station, buildings, dams, canals and many more. So, this soil is a very dangerous soil and problematic soil. Now, what are the characteristics of this soil? In general, this soil is very loose, dry and made up of low density material. So, it is lightweight. It compacts due to the addition of water or excessive load. Now, this is being a loose soil, it will have higher void ratio. It has very less water content as compared to its level of saturation. Hence, what happens due to large void ratio, weak bond and less water content and water enters into the void, breakage of interparticle bond and a change in the volume, drastic change in the volume happens. Similar change in volume occurs in expansive soil also. And what is the difference between expansive soil and collapsible soil? Black cotton soil is called as expansive soil and collapsible soils are also called as loess. So, expansive soils, they also show change in the volume. There would be swelling and shrinkage, but this will be due to the presence of clay mineral that is Montmorillonite. In case of collapsible soil, it is not because of Montmorillonite, rather it is because of rearrangement or repacking of soil grains. And this happens because of moisture or any additional or excessive load which that soil experiences. Now the next is testing of collapsible soil. Similar to other soils, tests are conducted for this soil also, like finding out 
natural moisture content, specific gravity, then in place density, liquid limit, plastic limit, and others. But the collapse potential of this soil is assessed and evaluated with the help of one dimensional consolidation test, which is conducted in the lab. In this test, we collect or we use the soil specimen which is trimmed or taken from an undisturbed soil sample. This undisturbed soil sample means it is that sample which is collected from the field and shows approximately the same structure which we have in the field. So that specimen is kept in the consolidometer and design pressure is applied on the specimen. This design pressure is basically equal to the pressure which is expected in the field and to be imposed on the soil sample. So to simulate field condition, this design pressure is applied. Specimen is then flooded with water and it is under pressure. So this combination of sustained load and saturated condition, it is kept for a certain duration of time. And due to this pressure and saturation level, there would be change in thickness of the soil. This change in thickness is called as consolidation settlement. It is recorded after certain time interval. Change in volume of the soil sample is correlated with change in thickness. How? Because length and breadth of that soil specimen will remain same. They won't change. But what will change? Under this pressure, there will be change in thickness. Hence, change in volume is correlated with change in thickness of the sample. Same thing we have seen in our Geotechnical Engineering 1 consolidation chapter. Okay. So, the collapse potential is assessed in terms of change in volume of the soil sample. So, the percentage change in volume is percentage change in height of the specimen and that itself is collapse potential. Now, on the basis of various number of tests conducted on the sample, researchers have come up with this table and observation. So, this table indicates collapse percentage or collapse potential and its severity. So, when collapse percentage is between 0 to 1 percent, there is no severe problem. But when it starts increasing, that is 1 to 5 percent, it is moderate level of trouble. 5 to 10 percent, yes, it is higher level of trouble. 10 to 20 percent, severe trouble. Over 20 percent, it is very severe trouble. So, once we come up with this percentage of collapse potential, then we can decide what kind of treatment we have to give to the soil so that it will serve the required purpose. It will take the load, it will not collapse, its shear strength will remain as we require for the design. So, these decisions are taken after conducting these tests. Now, this is a lab test which we have conducted. It has its own limitation. Like if we have taken two soil specimen from the same undisturbed soil sample, but it is virtually possible that they will have same physical properties. Their physical properties may be different. There may be a change in dimensions while trimming it off from the original undisturbed sample. This may happen. Hence, if we want to have more precise results, we have to go for the field test. There are field tests available, but these are very expensive and time consuming. Also, they are conducted on the limited area of the soil layer. Hence, it is preferred to go for more number of lab tests so that it will give us the acceptable results. Now, next is treatment methods. There are four methods. First, salt replacement technique. Second, chemical stabilization. Third, pre-wetting technique. Fourth, selection of suitable foundation. Soil replacement technique. When thickness of the collapsible soil is very less, the best solution is to remove the soil. After the removal of soil, it can be replaced in the trench in the form of compacted layers. Also, the trench or the excavated pit can be replaced by a new material like sand or crushed stone. What is the benefit? 
benefit is that because of this material there will be not only improvement in the bearing capacity of the soil but also the settlement characteristics of the soil will improve settlement would be less this type of method is more suitable for the construction of rows the second method is chemical stabilization so using chemicals we can modify the properties of collapsible soil this will reduce the settlement potential of the soil so cement lime or any other suitable chemical additive we can use in collapsible soil even flash when it is added to cement or lime improves the soil characteristics it make it more stable also if we are going for trenching and we can flood those trenches with the help of chemicals or solutions like sodium silicate and calcium chloride only the thing which is to be remembered is that effect of these solutions should reach the depth up to which the improvement of the soil is expected so this is chemical stabilization method the next technique is pre-wetting technique in this technique collapsible soil layer is flooded with water this water forces particles to come together and densify the soil this method is more effective if it is in combination with pre-loading or dynamic compaction that improves bearing capacity and settlement characteristics of collapsible soil but the prerequisite condition for this method is we should have data related to subsoil profile so subsurface investigation is mandatory or necessary for applying this technique this technique is not suitable if any structure is existing around our given site because there are chances of uh, going water deep into the ground under their foundation and this may endanger the stability of foundations of nearby structure the last technique is selection of suitable type of foundation so usually deep foundations are preferred in this type of soil because the foundations will take the superstructure load deep into the ground to the hard soil layer also mat foundation is preferred in this type of soil because they can withstand large settlement happening or occurring because of collapsible nature of soil so you can see in the diagram deep foundations are provided they are going up through the collapsible soil up to the stable strata through uh, surface friction and end bearing action the load would be taken care in the second diagram we can see there are footings which are connected together uh, in, uh, with the help of beams so also there there is a strip kind of footing means all the columns are connected at their base with a common footing this helps to distribute the load over larger area so safe bearing capacity criteria is also satisfied and it will also take care of settlement so this way uh, we have come to the end of our collapsible soil topic so in this topic we have seen what is meant by collapsible soil what are its characteristics what is the lab test for understanding the uh, collapsible potential of the soil or collapse potential of the soil after that what are the remedial measures or treatments which we can give or provide in such situation so thank you for today we will meet later thank you